I am inside of Nuke, and this is the final render that I ended up with. Which is obviously we can improve this by a lot, and I'm going to show you how we can go from this to something like this using Nuke and DaVinci. So the first thing we always do is we press R to create a read node, and then we just bring in the EXR files that we rendered out from Houdini. And since we, sh we rendered out all of the different light AOVs, we can actually isolate each of these components of the picture. So we have the combined volume, which is basically just the particles isolated. We have the specular, direct diffuse, and the indirect diffuse. And this indirect diffuse is basically just the global illumination. And what I was noticing in this combined volume pass is that the rim light was way too strong and it was producing some strange artifacts. So what I did was I shuffled out the rim light just by itself and then I removed it from this combined volume pass using a from merge. And then I went ahead and just color graded the rim light AOV by itself. I gained it down and then I gammaed it down and I used a saturation node just to remove some of those colors. And then I plussed it back on top of the combined volume. So this is where we were and this is where we are now. So I think this is much looking much better. We still have that silhouette of the particles, but it's not as crazy as it was in the beginning. The other thing I did was I created a luminance keyer. And what this does is it gives us an alpha channel based on the brightness of our image. So if I press A in the viewer here, you can view this alpha. And you can see that it is it has only isolated these brightest areas here. And I'm using that as a mask for a saturation node just to remove some of the colors in these really bright areas like this. And I'm also just mixing it down slightly. And then I also do a grade node with the same mask. And I just gain it a bit up to make the highlights a bit stronger. And I also just mix this slightly down. What we can do is we can go to this specular combined glossy reflection AOV. And I thought this was way too green or yellow. So I created a grade node. And inside of this multiply here, I just press this color wheel and I remove some green and I add some blue. Also remove some red. And then I just plussed it together with the combined volume we just looked at. The next one is the direct diffuse. And I thought this was a bit too contrasted. So I used another grade node, added some gamma, and then I removed some gain. Also removed some green from this. And again, I plussed this on top of the two other passes. Then we have the GI pass. And I thought this was way too weak. So I used a grade node and just gave it some more gamma. And then we plus all of those together. And we can see that we went from this to this, just with a few simple grade nodes and very simple adjustments. Now the next thing I did was I have this postage stamp here, which I I'm, have hidden the input, but if I press Alt and H, we can see that this is basically like a null node that we have in Houdini, which is linking back to our original render. I take bring this down here and then I use another shuffle node. And I take our position AOV, shuffle it into the R, G, and B respective channels. And that is going to be plugged into this gizmo called point position pass. And the image is going to be going in the image input here. And what this does is if we look at the alpha channel by pressing A, this has generated a mask for us based on the position data of this image. And this mask is being output in the alpha channel. So the way we use this node, this gizmo, and I'm going to have a link to this in the description, is we can copy paste this node and the point position pass input goes to the shuffled position pass here. And the image goes back to the render. So what we can do with this is if I press this center point color picker here and I click control, and I start moving around in our scene, we can see that we can generate masks based on the position data. And these masks are going to be sticking regardless of the camera movement. This is a really good thing about working with CG renders is that we very rarely have to rotoscope something because we can just gen generate masks from the AOVs like this. So I just, you can mess around with the scale and fall off as well. 
if you are happy with the mask, you can create, for example, a grade node and you can plug this point position mask in the mask input of that node. And then if I start grading this, we can see that we are only affecting that part of the image that we isolated with this point position mask node. So this is really, really useful. Let's go ahead and just delete those and go back to our main comp. So I created this diagonal mask using this method. And then inside of this grade node, I just gain it down a bit, gamma it down a bit, and I adjusted the colors just to darken the background very slightly. I also went ahead and did something similar using this C depth pass. So I have this shuffled off to the side into the R, G, P, and A channels. I am grading this down in a grade node. I'm just adjusting the black point and the white point just so I isolate just the background here. And I also make sure to set the channels to RGBA. Then I'm also using this in another grade node where I just gain down the background and gamma down the background. And you can see that this also makes a slight difference. All of this is just to help the viewer focus on this main subject here. And the other thing I did with the depth, depth pass here is I have another grade node here. Again, I adjust the white points and the black points to get something like this. And I use another grade node to give it a blue tint. Then I am plussing this on top of our comp just to create a fake kind of fog effect, which is helping a bit as well. Finally, the most common thing to do with the depth pass is to I have a copy node and it's linking back to this depth shuffle here. I think actually it would be better to just put it like this because we are shuffling this technically into the R, G, B, and A and not the depth. So let's try this and see if this works. So I have the copy and I'm copying the depth uh, set here from, from the depth set to the depth set and that link, that's linking back to this main render. And then I'm using a defocus uh, this uh, set the focus node and setting the focal point here and adjusting the settings the mass is set to depth and we end up with this kind of fake depth of field effect it's which is based on the depth uh, data or the distance from the camera so after this i so i'm blurring this a bit then i desaturate this and then i just screen it on top of this comp with a very low mix and this is just to fake some kind of lens diffusion so you can see that that really adds a lot it's a bit different to a glow the other thing i did the final thing i believe yes i have another luminance keyer here creating an alpha based on the brightness and then i invert it we isolate the brightest areas and if i press invert then we have isolated only the darkest areas and I'm using that as a mask into this Luma gray node here. And this is just generating these very fine film grain artifacts, as you can see here, just to make this a look a little bit less CG. Finally, I have a write node and I am writing this out as a, an X, EXR file. And make sure you have these uh, number icons. I don't know what they're called, but Nuke needs to have these to know that it's supposed to save each frame as a different file. So just call this something and make sure you have these four number icons here. Hashtags, I think. And then I just have this raw data checked. I also check this write ACES compliant EXR. And then I write this to disk. And then I'm going to show you how we can use this in DaVinci Resolve to do some final color correction and how we can export that as a video file. I am inside of DaVinci Resolve right now. And the first thing I would like to do is come to this file tab here, go to project settings and in the master settings, make sure this is the same resolution as our rendered EXR files. And then in the color management tab here, going to set the color signs to ASUS CCT and the ASUS version I am using at the moment is ASUS 1.2. And the ACES output transform, I'm going to set this to sRGB, which is this one. And let's just press save. In order to import our footage, going to right click in this media pool area, press import media. And here I have all of the frames that I've wrote from Nuke. 
So let's select all of these and press open. And if I drag this into our sequence and I try to play this, we can see that the colors are looking completely wrong. That's because we have to tell DaVinci how to process these colors. So let's right click our sequence here, go to ACES input transform. We have to come to color space conversion and set this to ACES CG. And our colors are now looking a bit more right. Now in order to color grade this footage, I'm going to come to this color tab at the bottom here. And just to mention, I got this method from a YouTuber called William Foucher. I'm going to link to his video in the description. But basically what I do is press Alt and then S to create a color grade node. And we can come into this curves tool here. Maybe make this a slight S curve just to give some contrast to the image. So if I press con if I press Control and D, I can enable and disable this node. You can see that this just helps the image slightly by giving it a bit of contrast. And I can create another color correct node with Alt S. And let's just remove some saturation. I think this is a bit too oversaturated at the moment. Let's maybe set this to 42. And I'm also going to drag this temp slightly just to shift the color tone very slightly towards the away from the blue colors. So this also helps a bit. Maybe I'll set this to 40. We could also add a slight bit of bloom to this image. So let's search for glow in this search bar here. I'm going to drag this down and can set this to screen. And if I enable and dis disable and enable this, you can see that this also just adding a slight enhancement to our picture, maybe something like this. Now we can finish this with a slight vignette effect. So let's press Alt S again. And I'm going to come to this mask area here, press the elliptical mask. Also press this inverted mask icon. Let's increase the size a bit. And let's come back to the curves here and drag this down slightly so we can see that we are darkening only the area outside of the mask. So this is a bit too extreme. So maybe something like this. And we can go back and adjust our mask just slightly, just, just the feather. So still might be a bit too much. Just want a very slight effect, something like this. And let's try to export this as a video file by coming down to this media tab down here. Sorry, the deliver tab, I mean. And we can double check our final result here. You can just choose your desired settings here. Usually the default settings work, work pretty well. So I'm just call this test. Pick a location. And I'm going to press this add to render queue. And when you are ready to render, just press this render all. This is the final result of what we did together in the videos. And just to do a quick recap, this is after we did all of the compositing and this is the original render. So we can see that we really improved this shot by quite a bit. We still have some issues such as these black edges here, which are coming from the depth pass. And we also have some banding, but I think this is looking quite nice. So I'm looking forward to see what you guys are able to create from these techniques. And thank you for watching.